What's really going on in this upside down world? Welcome to the Money GPS. You came here for the truth. The bond market is flashing today. We've got big news coming out. I've got to look at a bunch of different topics. The first thing we are going to look at the big signals. This is important for everybody, not just if they're invested in bonds, not just if they're invested in stocks, but your retirement account and so much more. The second thing I want to look at is oil falling right now. Spoiler alert, as I record this video, it's at about $66 a barrel, way off its highs. And the third thing is buy and sell. What are people doing today? I'm going to give you all of that and more. Let's begin. So let's start right here. Bond market flashes warning sign over global economic growth. The yield curves are flattening. We are seeing the same repeating patterns over and over again. Yes, yes, yes. The Federal Reserve, which will be the topic for today's video, essentially sending some uncertainty and volatility into the market. But what does that really mean? It means a suggestion that they are maybe not going to be as easy as they are today at some point in the future is sending the markets into a little hissy fit. Bond markets are flashing a warning signal over the outlook of the global growth as a combination of inflation fears and the situation also straining sparks a shift uh, in investor expectations. Investors don't know what to do. What? Whatever will we do if interest rates are not at 0% and we're not printing $120 billion a month? Short-dated bonds have come under renewed pressure globally since the Federal Reserve Chair Jay Powell indicated that an openness to a faster reduction in the pace of assets purchases by the U.S. Central Bank potentially clearing the way for earlier rises in interest rates. They could be doing a two steps forward, one step back kind of mentality. And we've seen this many times before. Let's gauge the market. Let's push it out there. And then we tone that back in the next week or two. So we'll see what happens here. But I think it's important to, to show you what's happening here in the markets themselves and how they are reacting to that. But while short-term debt has been hit by the prospect of tighter monetary policy, longer data bonds have rallied as the prospect of a further wave of the situation exacerbates concerns about the trajectory of the global economy. So there's this fight going on in the bond market, and we'll see what happens. Take a look right here at yield curves flattening US, UK, Germany. This is just showing you the gap between the 10-year and the two-year government bond yields, and they're all heading down into the negative territory. We will see what happens. Now, this was the case previously. Okay, We saw that 2018 things were getting real messy, and that is always a very good indicator. The 10 and 2 is an always, always a good indicator. Now, it happened to work out in that instance there where the markets freaked out, could it happen again? You never know. Some say it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, but anyway, it is an accurate indicator historically. Bond markets faith in the Fed set for the biggest test since the 1980s. I think it's a little bit more than that, but anyway, because they really stretch this out, and I want to highlight this just to really like sink this home. Hawkish? Is the Federal Reserve hawkish? I mean, come on. And I, I hate these words anyway, with the hawkish and the dovish, but basically just saying that, oh, now we're really tightening our belts. Come on. We're, the, the Federal Reserve is at 0%. The, the global central banks right now are close to 0% or close to the record lows ever in history. And we're talking about hawkishness. I mean, come on. Anyway, yields show inflation is seen as manageable, yet investors could be rattled by the next report on the price search. So we'll see what happens, of course, as the new data comes in. Our view, take a look at this, which is a typical, very typical uh, money manager, fund manager, you know, investor type of mentality. Our view is that inflation pressure will ease during the course of the next year. In the near term, hotter inflation numbers will put pressure on the Fed to move faster. Saying, don't worry long term, just a little blip. We've seen Christine Lagarde say this. We've seen just about everybody at this time. 
we have been short break evens and they look a little fairly priced. BlackRock basically just saying, among others, you know, there's a there's a bump in the road. That's all. Stock route leaves traders wondering how worried to be about the Fed's hawkish turn. I, I just every every article was saying the same kind of thing. Less accommodative Fed create headwinds for the market. What's going to change the narrative? Well, well, well. Anyway, I'm not going to beat a dead horse on this one. Just wanted to show you that the S&P 500 seeing two weeks in a row in the red is very uncommon. Think about that. Just, just two weeks in a row. You can see right here the S&P being the first one on the left-hand side where it has gone. Now, small caps on the very right, which I've been highlighting, which has usually sees more volatility, both to the upside and the downside, has been rather weak, something that I have talked about extensively here on the channel. And it connects in with this. US ship logjam stretches far into the Pacific longer than ever before. 96 ships at this time. And it just continues to get worse. I believe there it is, yes. Container ships wait almost 21 days. That's three weeks on average to enter the port of LA. And I know others around, other ports are also very busy from the data I have seen, but nothing like this, nothing like this. I mean, we went from, let's say seven days to 21 days in a relatively short period of time. Things have certainly took a turn for the worse. Oil prices, here we go, have tanked so hard. Traders are assuming planes won't fly for three months, according, according to Goldman Sachs. I just think that's a little bit ridiculous. They are really putting too much into this, as far as I'm concerned, at this time. We don't know what's going to happen. Coming days, coming weeks. I told you the next two weeks going to be volatile. So far, that has turned out to be true. We will see what happens. According to the big banks, they are saying in the next two weeks, I guess week, week and a half time frame, going to be volatile. You can look at the price itself, $66 a barrel for crude. Going down significantly here. Now, my friends in Pennsylvania, check this. Oh, Pennsylvania braces for huge energy price hikes as winter looms. That connects directly in with this. Take a look. PUC, Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission, urges consumers to prepare for rising winter energy costs and explore options for conservation and savings. You can argue what the cause is. We can fight about that all day long. I believe it's a bunch of different things, different reasons. There's always going to be speculation behind anything. Look, I could show you this. Here's a stock market, okay? What about this? The S&P, and I just, my screen just flipped. The S&P itself. This chart's are a little bit messy, but anyway. Is this the result of investors buying into good companies? Some of that is, yeah, for sure. But is it also speculation? Are people literally trading in and out of these stocks every day, every hour, and in fact, every millisecond? Yes, absolutely. So you're always going to get exaggerations both on the up and the down, prices moving left, right, and center, flash crashes, and so on. And so right now, very relevant, as I record this, I don't know what's happening with my mouse here, very relevant is Bitcoin. You're watching this thing going down significantly as I record this video, getting closer and closer to 50,000. And looking at what has happened here, a lot of this is speculation, big speculation. So behind weather, behind power and agriculture and all these different things that, you know, you look at separate entities, are actually connected because that's the speculative nature of the financial system and how it connects in together. 
And speaking of speculation, there is no more speculation than in Toronto's real estate prices. I will say that over and over again. I will argue that till I'm blue in the face. Toronto's home prices rise 22% to a record with supply vanishing. Detached homes year over year, November last year to November this year, jumped 30%. Average price, $1.16 million. And you look at a 29 to 2020 to 2021, I mean, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it's something like 50%. It's, it's insane. It's say called. I got no words. Okay, Janet, hold me. I need some. I need some loving. China's shock still shakes the world, grappling with trade's future. Governments struggle with follow from China's trade weight. Now, this article, if you have the time, go down in the description. Look at the sources. This is talking about the World Trade Organization, how China has. Um, you know, become an issue, if you want to call it that. Take a look. A surging surplus. Booming Chinese exports have overpowered imports, hitting a record. China's quarterly trade surplus with the U.S. rising largely year over year over year over year. Exports to the U.S. going up considerably, considerably at this time. And this is, of course makes the United States dependent on China. 21 days, ships waiting overseas, a lot of that coming from the Shanghai port to the LA port. That's, that's the number one trade route in the world. Big time. This is very important to understand, okay? And then last but not least, buy now, pay later. Do you out there know somebody you know, you know what you want to share. That's up to you in the comments below. Please buy now, pay later. Do you know somebody that uses these kind of things? That's always there spending on their credit cards that are overextending themselves. Do you know somebody that does that? Please, let's discuss that. Buy now, pay later booms show no signs of slowing this holiday season. 7% of shoppers say they will be using buy now, pay later as a method of payment for holiday shopping this year. And apparently that's 29% year over year growth. I thought the number was quite low, but when you look at that, it's unbelievable. Really unbelievable. And this is very concerning. If you agree with that, this is concerning, hit that thumbs up button, okay? I need to know that you agree with what I'm talking about. And just for a laugh here, the Bank of Japan sees what's currently happening today as potential reason to keep the constant flow of stimulus. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. <laughs> Any excuse. It's all good. Listen, I appreciate you being here today. I want to thank you for your time. If you want to support me, it's a simple matter of hitting that thumbs up button. When you do so, a whole bunch of people out there are notified about this video, help the algorithms and everything else. So I do thank you very much for that. If you haven't seen this video yet, then you definitely want to check it out. So just click it and I'll see you there.